Here's the thing. Oh, well, that's packing tape. That wasn't very interesting. Okay, take two. Here's the thing. This is coming from Slovakia, I believe. Something from eBay. Ooh. A little bit rattly. It's not good. Aww. Somebody put a probably a big old five millimeter LED or something on there. I mean, why would you do that when you have these? Or a switch? Or maybe the LEDs don't work. Anyway, A590 hard drive for the Amiga 500. I've already had one of these. Seem to be missing some screws. So, and again, this is functionally identical. Yeah, all the same chips as a 2091 hard drive controller. This did not come with a power supply. It also looks like it didn't come with any memory or a hard drive or any cables. Um, yeah, this is weird. I didn't remember that this was there was like a, this looks like a kind of a custom power connector for the hard drive. That kind of stinks. And a bracket. We need a bracket to mount. We're going to put a SCSI to SD in here, which we always do. I have a version six sitting around. I'm going to go ahead and use for this. But um, yeah, hopefully it works. So there's a mod that you can do to this board uh, where you can bring power from the motherboard over to the hard drive. And um, I have my notes on that and I'll, I'll refer to that. But this, yeah, obviously this thing isn't going to work until I do that and until I get some power hooked up for the hard drive. So I'm going to have to go into my stock of parts and see the best course of action for that. There's two connectors here. Um, one of them is for an XT and one of them is for a SCSI, but the XT is, a, if I'm not mistaken, it's an earlier version. I tried to get this thing, my previous one of these I had, I tried to get it to work with um, an XT drive, but as it turns out, it, it's like the first generation of XT drive, which there's, those weren't nearly as popular as the subsequent uh, generation of them and um, they're extremely rare there's no kind of um, flash memory um, or at least one that's reasonable um, so you just stick with SCSI and you get a SCSI to SD and you'll, you'll be fine SCSI S XT it's got a SCSI XT jumper here an LED jumper Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at it. I don't, I don't remember how this is, but th there's this is a three-pin jumper. They're kind of bent over, and one side says SCSI, and the other side says XT, and then it says LEDs. But this thing should actually function uh, with a light, anyway. Um, you know, at least the uh, the chips on the board and the buses and everything would would actually work. And we should get an LED here. Yeah, it may not function without... <laughs> it may not function without, uh, without its power supply.
the odd part about this particular device is that it's missing all its jumpers. There's no jumpers on this board at all, and it really does require at least one for the memory. There is no memory, so you want to have it on amnesia mode. Um, let's get a close-up. It's, it's a curious looking board, actually. So there is the RAM selection uh, jumper. It's right in the middle of the board. And uh, yeah, oddly they use the term amnesia. Um, you've got no memory, right? That's cute. Um, and you know, it's also got the stylistic uh, same sort of label. I gotta take this off. I'm sorry, it is an inspection sticker, but Party Mix A590 with that same kind of script that's on the 2091. That's weird nine thing happening. But anyway, um, so it's got it's got its original handwritten uh, ROMs, uh, I would think. Who knows? It could be something somebody did later, but you know. You never know. And then, uh, yeah, I was trying to figure out what the heck this was, what this said down here, and uh, it's pretty funny. Um, like red? I'm like, what's red? It says Fred. Fred, and I was thinking, what the heck is that? It's Wilma. So, it's, they named it after Flintstones. Fred and Wilma. LED 1 and 2. And then this jumper needs to be in place, I believe, to discern between the two, um, uh, whether it's an XT. Uh, look what I found. That's going to make it not work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> JP3. There's a JP1, which is the memory selection, a JP3. Uh, there's no JP2, there's a JP3 for XT or SCSI, and JP4 is uh, the, um, I mean, none of the, none of the jumper, none of the jumper positions had any jumpers on them, and I, uh, now that I've put jumpers on them, it's behaving a little differently. First it gives a green screen, and then a yellow screen. Um, but I'm just wondering if wherever JP4 is, it's missing a jumper that's supposed to be in position. Or maybe it's a jumper that's not even, uh, yeah, I guess it doesn't actually have a jumper on it. It's, it's probably on the board somewhere, but it's, it's, it doesn't have an actual jumper on it. Is that it right there? JP4? Yeah, it is. There it is. So JP4 is already there. Let's see if I can get a focus on that. Right here and uh, interrupt, yeah. So, that you shouldn't have to mess with that, um, and I didn't, so. Now it says all, all the factory is is that everything's in position one. Uh, all, everything is, is in the first position. Um, but it doesn't say what the default of the, uh, the dip switch is. The dip switch is, um, uh, with this off, it disables the auto boot. So it's down, it's off, it disables the auto boot, which is how I want it now, now that I'm trying to get it to even boot with the Amiga on, the Amiga to boot with this on. Uh, two is um, uh, last unit number LUN, you know, L-U-N. Uh, down is off and it's, it's disabled, but um, uh, you, can, you can put multiple drives on each address, so that can be on. Three is um, a short wait period. Uh, is the off position and a long wait period is the on position so that one we want down and four it says reserved eg don't mess with it well uh, what is it supposed to be you know can somebody tell me <laughs> what the position is supposed to be um, you know the, the the Amica hardware database tells you that the jumpers all it tells you all the default positions of the jumpers but it doesn't tell you the default position of this so um, that's a missing piece of information. But I guess I can try it in both positions and see if it changes the behavior. But anyway, let's fix this ROM chip and, uh, and go from there.
Oh man. Let's make sure we're on the chip itself. Yeah, pretty sure we are. It's jammed in there good. It really is. So just want to make sure I don't tweak something real bad when I push down on this. It, it is gonna flex the board. Yeah, it's flexing the board a little more than I like. So use a couple things to Yeah, that's better. It's just stuck. It's just stuck is all. Yeah. Perfectly fine. So the uh, Fred, the power LED is not coming on when this thing is connected, so that's a good place to start. Uh, that would definitely cause a problem if we didn't have power. Now this power might be tied to the rear connector for which I'm not going to be supplying power. Here's a good exploded view of the components. Uh, we have the bottom shell, we're missing this barrier, here's the board, and then there's a, another shell that goes on top of it that I guess you put the hard drive on. And uh, this seems to indicate another revision where there is a Molex connector on the board. This one does not have that connector, it has this. So it shows that there's something here, you know. It's definitely not not what we got going on here. Are we in focus very well? Pretty good. So, um, alright, there's some kind of upper shell that supports the drive that's missing. Plus all the cables and the fan. Uh, we're, not even gonna, we're not even gonna need a fan on this when we put a SCSI to SD on it. So, yeah. Um, hmm, yeah, this one here does match our power. It doesn't have the Molex over here and it has that. Weird. Anyway, so I'm going to look at these schematics and see where we're getting power from. So here we have the, the, the power connector for which we don't have a power supply for it. And what we have here is a power sense circuit. So um, this thing probably won't power up unless I do that mod. So we're gonna start with that mod uh, and then maybe we'll get an LED light and, and maybe the thing will just start working. Uh, I thought the power was only for the hard disk, but it looks like you know it's, it's, it's gonna power the fan also, um, and uh, yeah, right here, they recommend connecting the ground of the Amiga to here and uh, you know, literally on the connector itself, you go on the back side of it and you connect, you connect it down to bus power, which is like the first, some, some, some like pin six and pin eight or something like that. So actually I have it here. Somebody made a uh, picture of it and um, I had to modify it to actually see, 
you know, I wanted to a little bit better of a zoom. So, uh, yeah. Now, I think the two middle ones there are the, um, are the ground. So really, you're probably doing 5 volts and 12 from the bus power of the Amiga. That's probably what that is. It says pin uh, 6 and 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Pin 6 and pin 10 from bus power. Let's see if we've got that in that schematic. Pin 83. So it's going to be at the top, is that right? Because they say it's here. Yeah, it's at the top. Let's see. Oh, what's going on? Pin 5, pin 7. Can I see the bottom? Yes, I can. Pin 4, pin 6. Pin 10. Uh, pin 10, hello, where does it go? Twelve volts. That the one? Yeah, that's the one. Alright, let's see. VCC. Which, as we know, is uh, five volts. Okay. Pin six equals five volts. VCC. Pin ten equals twelve volts. And it's already grounded to bus, I guess. I guess. Must must be, because I've already done this mod and it works fine. So we're going to get some power to this thing and hopefully the light lights up and we'll see if it gets any farther. I could have sworn the power connector on the back was just for hard drive, but that, that can't, I, that's probably not right. It's probably, I probably, we probably need it for the, um, to power the whole thing up. So big surprise there. Okay, bodge wire complete. Double check the connections. Again, I verified that pin 6 from the edge connector is uh, 5 volts. So obviously we're going to put that as red. And it uh, goes to the um, connector marked yellow on the top of the board. It's the, it's the top connector as we're looking at it this way. And then pin 10 comes over and it goes to the bottom, and that's 12, plus 12, and the two middle ones are the ground, so that makes sense. That, that's, a, that's a typical Molex connector pinout, although this is not a typical Molex connector. Figured I'd, I ought to show you, um, you know, how I handle this sort of situation. Bodge wires are never an ideal situation, and these are power rails. Um, one of them is VCC, and then one of them is a 12-volt rail. Um, so you want to use some heavier gauge. I mean this little signal wire at bodge here is is one thing So um, I picked some uh, I don't know what that is 18 gauge 20 20 gauge maybe I think it's not 18 it's it's 20 uh, probably and so that's uh, that's adequate for this purpose Especially um, when we're talking about a SCSI to SD it doesn't use a lot of current But we do want to use something larger and of course the color using a appropriate color for the bodge wires uh, Let's the next guy know instantly what they're for um, They know that yellow is is uh, 12 volts and the red is the VCC 5 volts um, and also the the technique um, of, uh, I can't get any closer than that. Uh, so, 
you're going to tin the wire and then you're going to cut it back until it's just, I, I like to have the wire the right size. I don't like to solder it on there and then cut it because it's really difficult to get uh, even edge cutters in there and uh, avoid um, scratching something. You gotta get them down on the board. So I like to have, I like to tin the wire. And when you tin the, when you tin wire, it will, sh the wire will recede. The, the insulation will recede. And so you wind up tinning it and then you, and then you keep going this way with the solder. But at a certain point it'll stop because um, it doesn't have anywhere else to go. It won't shrink any or expand anymore, whatever it's doing when it's hot. Um, so, uh, uh, once that's done, then you can cut it back, and really you just want a few millimeters because um, you don't want the big piece of, of uh, uninsulated wire just hanging around. So uh, just a couple millimeters or, you know, maybe three or four millimeters length. And then obviously I added solder to the terminals, to the, to the pads first. And, uh, and then I just, you know, uh, I had some, plenty of solder on the wire, plenty of solder on the pad the pin and so uh, then you just join them together and I usually pick one side or the other I don't join it on top I join it to the side um, that makes it so it doesn't stand up too high uh, you don't want the highest joint on a, on a, on a PCB to be the, the, the rail so uh, yeah so I use that and and routing of the wire is another consideration um, you want to make them as flat as possible these are not um, crossing each other, so we don't have these two doubled up um, uh, in thickness and, and potentially causing a problem with clearance. Although I think on the board, yeah, and, and based upon what we see on, on the metal underneath, we've got these standoffs um, that raise this thing up uh, adequately to, uh, to, to accommodate um, these wires, but I don't want to press my luck and cross these wires. so. Uh, the way to do that would be to swing it around, you know. If I just came in here with the yellow, I'd be crossing the red, you know. I'd be crossing the red to get over there. So instead, I swung around and came in from, from the other angle. And just steering clear of the, uh, the uh, mounting points, you know, making sure the wire isn't there. So anyway, um, I think I feel confident enough to test this now. Let's give it a shot. So we should have... Everything's working right. We should have power on the power LED. Let's see what happens. Yep, we do. So that means the board has power now. So what do we see on the screen? It might be nothing because, oh no, we're good. All right. Um, anyway, so um, we're good. We got LED. Um, so we can proceed. Uh, it's difficult to know the best course of action. This is a non-standard connector. I, I don't think it's doing anybody any favors. The diagrams do show that it has a Molex on the motherboard. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just solder uh, a connector to it. Um, I have this random thing that I had done something with and um, Turns out this is the correct connector for the, uh, you know, this is a drive, uh, a small uh, floppy drive type connector. And that's going to be the right one for the uh, SCSI to SD. So, uh, yeah, hmm. This doesn't seem worth it to me to put a Moldex connector on there. Um, who's, who in their right mind is going to pull this out to put a regular hard drive in there? I don't think anybody would, so uh, I'm going to go with that. And I should also try to populate the memory and see how we do with that. Um, I have more memory on the way, but it's taking forever. It's going to take even longer now that we have the CV going on. So, pull a memory off of a 2091 board and stick it on there. So let's go. And forward on this stuff. Okay, so we got some nice new memory in there and let's switch over to uh, two megs. Turn on. Hold on. I want to still do a mega test kit to test the memory. Okay. There you go.
Okay. So it booted, that's good. 2.5 megabytes. Good. It's a longer process because I have more memory, interesting. Okay. So we're good on the memory. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is obviously get us power for the, uh, the, the SCSI to SD. And we're just going to solder this guy onto there. And see what we have here? We have yellow and red. So I don't, I don't know what the deal is with yellow and orange, but because actually yellow is red and orange is yellow with, with the actual standard drive colors and, and actually motherboard colors too, power supply colors. It's pretty common to, uh, in PC personal computing equipment to have red as the 5 volts and yellow as the 12. So um, yeah, so we're going to put a length of this on there and have it hanging off. And then another challenge we have is, um, well first of all I want to try to, if you remember the picture of the board layers, of the actual structure of this, not the layers of the board as in the layers of the PCB, but uh, let's see if we can bring up that picture we had earlier. No, oh, perfect, I went right to it, lucky. So here we have the, um, the layers of the actual drive, and we're missing, at least we're missing two of the layers from the inside. Um, the protective probably clear plastic uh, layer that a piece just a piece of thin plastic that goes between the mother the board of the 590 and the metal case and so we're gonna have to replicate that for safety to make sure that if uh, it's it's more of a thing where if you get a piece of wire or a ball of solder rolling around in there it doesn't it doesn't ground whatever it touches to the to the chassis uh, be, or I guess if, if something flexes enough, um, the board will actually bend down and touch some. That would take quite a, a force because of these good standoffs on here. But anyway, good idea to have that on there. Uh, we'll do something about that. And also this layer here. So I'm not going to attempt to replicate this layer, um, this hard drive bracket. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's quite elaborate and it's not necessary, although I think this top piece might function as an EMI shield, but you know, again, these things, uh, we're not as concerned about that anymore. So uh, I think um, what we're going to do there is just uh, 3D print a bracket that, that lines us up with the uh, holes, these, but I imagine, aren't these lined up with hard drive holes? Yeah. This is the bracket that I make for the A2091. Let's you put a SCSI to SD run on 2091. So it has the same footprint as a hard drive. And so we take these two holes here and line them up here and they line up perfectly. We really just can use this bracket and we just need the uh, standoffs, you know, and then we can just put that right in there and it'll look nice. No problems at all. Okay. Before we go any further, since it's super important, let's go ahead and verify our um, power. So um, here we have this connector here, and we have the 5 volts is on the red, indeed, and the 12 volts is on the yellow. So, um, and we know from this that 5 volts is this red, so 5 volts is going to go to this pin right here. We got 5 volts ground, and then there's a missing one, I guess. Uh, but the grounds are connected together anyway. Um, and then uh, 12 volts, so 5, 5, ground, 12. So we're just going to just solder right onto that connector. Why not? Okay, so using a similar technique I outlined earlier, I uh, you know, tinned the wire, cut it back a little bit, not as important obviously, um, soldered it onto the pins here, obviously put some heat shrink on the wire ahead of time and slid it down and shrunk it down on there, so shouldn't have any problems with that. This ribbon cable is going to have to 
Yeah, maybe it'll be okay, just like that. Right? Okay. I think that's one, and I think it's on. Let's see. Oh, look at that. I don't even need to do anything because I already had it all set up. Yeah, so this isn't formatted, but whatever. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it's got a, a gigabyte free. So this thing is working perfectly. Um, we just need to do some standoffs for the hard drive bracket and mount it and find out something, some kind of barrier for that. All right, so I'm waiting for spacers to print. And uh, this, somebody put electrical tape on here. Obviously, you know, the connector on the A590 is a female. So I'm not sure what you would need to... Because that kind of looks like something that might be factory, not this. Hmm. Well, in bad shape. If I need to, I will put some Kapton tape on it. Obviously that's going to be better. As good or better than what they had. This has got that hole right here. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that. But this needs a cleaning and so does this, so we'll clean it. Okay, let's do some capped on tape, shall we? It'll serve as that barrier that I don't have anymore that's missing. And it'll also replace whatever tape was there Not going to be a perfect lie, but it'll serve the purpose. Later, something falls in there and whatever. Or perhaps it's just a waste of my time. You decide. wrinkles all over it and uh, whatnot, but you know what? It's going to work.
There. We like that. I'm not getting that far down there. All right, I think I might have to just bite the bullet and put shorter M3s in there, you know? I've got these nice black ones. I wonder how far we get with them for the drive. You know what? I think that's going to work. That's going to make life a lot easier. Am I too high? Am I too low? I would suspect too high. Oops, I think I got it. Yep. And I actually don't think I should tighten those down until it really does look like I'm lined up pretty well here. Well, maybe not here. Let's see. If these weren't M3 screws, they were something really close. You know, maybe SAE. Imperial. Uh, equivalent. Can glue that puppy right on there. We're not even really worried about the holes lining up, but uh, eh. whatever. Tape's going to come in handy now. It's going to keep the Amiga motherboard from, well, it's hard drive controllers raising the whole thing up anyway, so never mind about that. Okay, so maybe these aren't supposed to be bent over like they are. <laughs> See if we can manage to do that without straighten them out without causing a problem. So this thing got squished. Oh yeah, I think I might have gotten it. Yeah, much better. Yeah, it looks good. It looks pretty good. it looks pretty nice. Not much to be done with that hole other than maybe put a sticker on it. All right, well, another 
Amiga Peripheral Commodore product brought back from the dead. You gotta love it. Thanks for watching.